You know, turkey is a really, really juicy bird, as long as it's cooked properly. I know this sounds crazy, but you gotta teach a turkey how to swim. One of the most commonly asked questions I've had throughout my whole career is how do you cook a juicy turkey? Let me tell you how we're gonna do it. The secret is all in a brine. Ingredients to a brine, maple syrup, add it to some boiling water, add some sweet spices. We've got star anise, cloves, and of course, coarse rock salt. Put all of them in a pot of boiling water, bring it to a boil. We just wanna let all the salt and the sugar dissolve. Asak, could I have some finished brine, please? Yes. Very important that the finished brine is cool. We're dealing with uh, poultry here. We don't want to make anyone sick with the risk of salmonella contamination. So it's very important that the brine is made the day before you need it. So this, this is cold. It's been refrigerated overnight. We're going to take our bird. The giblets have been removed. I'm going to just fold the wings under like that. And then we're going to immerse the whole turkey into the brine. Now, it's important that the brine gets into the cavity. That way, the brining process works from the inside out. Now, what we're going to do, this is going to take about four hours to brine. Very important we keep it refrigerated at this point. Take out the old one. Yeah. Thank you, Isaac. You're fine. This is our brine bird. It's been in here for four hours. How does brining work? There's a lot of natural moisture and juices locked inside, locked inside the cells of the meat, but it's trapped in there by the protein. So what, what the brining process, what it does is help release, release some of that juice. But what's turkey without a stuffing? I'm gonna ask ASAP to dry this. Very important that it's patted dry because we're gonna roast it. Yeah. What's turkey without stuffing? Let's make some stuffing. What I've got here is sauteed onions, a little bit of bacon, some celery, and a touch of garlic. We're gonna add some melted butter, and of course, some day-old cubed bread. Older bread always makes a better stuffing. It allows the juices of the bird and the butter to be absorbed. Of course, we're gonna add some sage, classic herb. Fresh thyme. Throw in all the leaves. Want to mix it like that. And here's the finished product. What we're going to do is prepare our bird, stuff it. It's beautifully brined. We want to make sure that we season the inside of it. Once again, using some sea salt. In it goes. Then I'm going to stuff in the stuffing, adding it all in, making sure we're packing it into the cavity. It's important that the stuffing is at room temperature as well. This will facilitate in a faster, safer cooking time. Once we filled it, turkey comes with its own natural device for tying the legs up. There's this flap of skin. What we want to do is stuff the legs under there they're like that. We've got the, the legs, uh, the wings folded underneath like this. Our turkey is now ready for roasting. That's great, guys. Thanks. A lot of people don't realize that the turkey is actually a very, very lean bird. So in order to make sure that it's perfect, it needs a little help along the way. Let me show you a little secret about the stuffing. I've stuffed the bird. We're gonna use a Sunday spoon. 
We're going to insert it into the center. What's going to happen is the spoon's going to heat up. Heat's going to conduct into the center of the stuffing. It's going to ensure that your stuffing is piping hot. Here are the giblets. They consist of the heart, the crop, and the neck. We don't want to use the liver, though. We're going to save the liver, because that's going to make a terrific breakfast for us in the morning. In addition to those, I'm also going to cut off the Pope's nose. This is our secret ingredient. What we're doing is I'm making a giblet stock. This stock will be the secret ingredient for what we need for a killer gravy. We add all of our ingredients to the pot, and then I'm going to pour some cold water. Imperative that the water is cold. If you use hot water, it's just going to cause your stock to be cloudy, dirty, and not very appealing. Then we're going to bring this up to a simmer. Always use cold water. Bring it up to a simmer. Now our bird is ready for the oven. What we're going to do is I'm going to finish it by rubbing on some room temperature butter. Don't be shy with this. Remember, turkey is a lean bird. Then the secret, which I like to do, is to take some bacon, wrap it over the top of it, place it on top of the butter. We're going to bard the top of the bacon, the top of the turkey, with this bacon. Can I get some mirepoix, please? We're going to go over to our roasting tray. And we're going to add some mirepoix to it. Perfect. That looks great. I'm going to add the mirepoix into there. Thank you very much. Mirepoix is the French culinary term for aromatic vegetables. It consists of carrots. This is the perfect size as well. Celery and onions. When these roast, they're going to be very aromatic. They're going to permeate the turkey or anything that's in there with a lot of delicious flavor. Very important so you keep the size as well. If it's too small, because this is going to roast for a while, they're going to end up burning. What you want is it to be nice and caramelized, very sweet, very delicious. Then we're going to take our turkey, we're going to lift it, and we're going to place it on top of our mirepoix. There, the bird's now ready for the oven. First of all, before we put it in the oven, I just want to reiterate a little bit of the tray. Notice the tray, the sides aren't very high. Very important that the, the bird is up out of the tray. We want to make sure that the heat radiates all over the sides of it. That way it ensures a beautiful color and very consistent cooking as well. ASAC, let's go to the oven. Yes. Now the temperature of the oven, I believe, and cooking it at a slow, steady heat, 300 degrees. We're looking at approximately 20 minutes a pound. A bird like this is going to take us uh, about six to seven hours. After that time, this is what we're going to end up with. Look at that. The color, it's perfect. What I've done about 40 minutes ago, I removed the bacon. That way it allows the top to get up. And just when you thought that was terrific, ASAC. Thank you. It's very important, about every 20 minutes or so, grab the butter, the juicing, the juices, the drippings that are in the tray, and just pour it over the top like that. But don't be shy. Be very liberal. Get everything. Make sure you get it over the drumsticks, completely over the breast, over the wings. If you do this every 20 minutes, it'll ensure that you'll have a beautiful turkey. Another thing to remember as well is to, every time you do it, Rotate the tray. Rotate the tray 180 degrees. So we took it out like that. This time, we'll put it back like that. A lot of people ask me, why do chefs wear clogs? For this exact reason. A lot of the times, we're carrying a hot, heavy tray that's filled with boiling hot liquid. If we're, any of this was ever to spill and pour into our shoes, it could result in a nasty, nasty burn. So if anything ever happens, off goes the clog, and everybody's happy. How's that goes? Everything going well? Everything going well? Yes. Here is the perfectly roasted turkey. Color is magnificent. It's golden brown. 
The smell is beautiful. It's just permeating the whole room. Before I start carving, we're going to remove the stuffing. We're going to carefully remove our Sunday spoon, have a warmed dish to put the stuffing in. Using a large spoon, you want to empty out the cavity of all its stuffing, exercising caution as it's very hot at this stage. And as far as the carving goes, it's actually a lot simpler than it looks. I'm going to share a little secret with you. There, we've removed our uh, stuffing. We'll keep it warm. Now my little mantra with regards to carving, if you remember this golden rule, legs, breast, and the rest, guarantee you success every single time. So where I start is always the legs. I want to remove the leg, just like so, pulling all the time. You know it's cooked perfectly when it just lets go like that. That's the first leg. Is the carved turkey. What we want to do is save the bones, of course. These are critical. These taste great. We're going to put them in a pot of cold water. We're going to take our carcass, crush it, place it in the cold water. Can I get some Mirapois, please? Once again, remembering, always want cold water. Ensures that we have a beautiful, clear stock. It's very clean. We'll add our Mirapois. 
bring it up to a simmer, simmer it for two hours, and that'll be the best stock you've ever had. And that's how you carve a turkey. Excellent, those look great. Nice, perfect, we need them. It's very good, yes, Just when you thought cooking a turkey was stressful enough, there's the gravy with all those lumps. But hey, no more. So what's roast turkey without an awesome gravy? Let me tell you how to make the perfect lump-free gravy. It all starts with making a roux. What I've done is poured off some of the excess fat from the roasting tray. We've still got our beautifully caramelized uh, uh, mirepoix in here and just enough fat to make our roux. A roux is equal portions of fat and flour. So I'm just gonna pour in my flour like this and what we're looking at doing is making a paste out of, the, out of our flour and our butter and our pan drippings and everything else that's good in there. But one of the disadvantages with a roux, if it isn't cooked enough, it can have a very floury taste. So what I'm going to ask Asak to do is to take over this, please, Asak. Remember the stock we put on? Well, we're going to add a little bit of seasoning to it. We're going to take the green part of the leek Gonna keep it whole like this, and inside of it, we're gonna add some black peppercorns, a bay leaf, some sprigs of thyme, and some parsley stems. Then we're gonna close the leek like that, and then fold it over on itself, just like that. Then taking a piece of butcher's twine, we're gonna wrap it around the leek. Tie it up tight. By doing this, it ensures that all our aromatics and the bokey garni remain within the leek and stays inside. We we'll drop that into our stock and move on. Remember the giblet stock? It's just about ready. It's been simmering. We've got some uh, Riesling white wine here. I prefer Riesling with a turkey. We're gonna add some of the Riesling to the pan. And we're gonna add it, give it a quick stir. What we're looking at doing is incorporating the wine into the roux. This is where we want to turn up the heat. Very important to turn up the heat at this stage. Because what we want to do is we want to start cooking this. We've got to start simmering. Look how that wine has already started to thick up, thicken up. Then we're going to take our sauce from the, the giblets and we're going to pour it into our pan. Give it a quick stir as well. That's the secret to a good roux. Cook out the flour and stir it often. It needs a little bit of attention, but it will reward you with a very satisfying flavor and consistency. Beautiful. So we've distributed the roux nicely throughout the liquid. Oh, it's making me hungry. It's almost dinner time. And then from our stock, the finished product, this is our beautiful, beautiful reduced turkey stock. We're gonna pour just a little bit more in there. Whisk it up. Gonna add some salt, a little bit of flavor. Perfect, oh, the smell coming from this is just incredible. It's very rich, you can smell the turkey. It's wonderful. The caramelized nature of all the mirepoix, it's just wonderful. Stirring, remember, stir around the sides. You don't want to forget anything you've left over here. Voila. Then at this point, we want to strain it. Strain it into a clean pot. Give it a quick tap to get rid of the solids. Mmm, and that is gravy. Okay guys, how's the spots? It's all good. When I was growing up, my mom used to make a turkey. She'd bar it with the bacon. She'd do two stuffings. She'd put sausage and onion stuffing in the front, and she'd put a chestnut stuffing in the, in the back. I still dream of those days and eating that turkey.
outside. Hey, 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 what are you guys doing? No one eats before the chef. But you know what, you guys, come on down, guys. Okay. It's been great, you guys have all really helped me a bit, hey? It's turkey. A, yeah, oh, Bring don't forget the, the gravy. Oh, What's gravy. turkey without gravy, right? There we get some bowl. Help yourself to a glass of wine, please. We've got a, we've got a lovely Riesling, we've got a Chardonnay. Absolutely. Thanks, another successful day. Thank you very much, <laughs> cheers. To the turkey, Woo! nice work, nice. Skin, that's <laughs> part, eh? Okay. Wow. Whoa! I got two plates. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it works. Wow. I'll certainly get bigger after eat this. Look at you, double fisting. Mighty turkey. Oh, do the dunk. All right, there we go. I really need a napkin. <laughs>